I guess I can move on to the next one. Still, we are trying to get better and better at the task of super resolution, and we are changing architectures. Let's say in terms of notation, you have a high resolution image, you have the corresponding low resolution image, and how do you obtain your low resolution image? You take your high resolution image, you push it through a Gaussian filter, and then down sample it. Drop your pixels, the ones that you don't need. The super result image, it's what's gonna come out of your algorithm. And then you're gonna compare ISR versus IHR. And then you're upscaling from your low resolution to the high resolution. Maybe your low resolution it is two times smaller, four times smaller, eight times smaller. That's your low resolution image. It has a height, it's a, it has a width, and it has red, green, blue as its channels. The corresponding high resolution is R times bigger, maybe two times bigger. What is the big idea here? If you remember in the first paper that we covered, there was this step that you would take your low resolution image, uh, use by cubic uh, interpolation, have it have the same resolution at, as your HR, and then push it through your convolutional neural networks. It turns out that this is not efficient. It's computationally expensive because per each layer of your neural network, now you need to process more pixels, maybe twice more pixels, maybe four times more pixels. And it's gonna end up being computationally more expensive. The big idea here is don't do that. Don't uh, use bicubic interpolation right away on your image, postpone it until the later layers in your neural network or get rid of bicubic interpolation altogether. Use convolutional operations. You have your low resolution image, and then using convolutions, you're gonna go from one filter map to the next one, one layer to the next layer, while preserving the low resolution, the original low resolution. Now per each layer, you have less pixels to process. Your neural network is much faster. Do it for a couple of layers, and then for the last layer, output uh, R squared channels. It's actually R squared times C, C is red, green, blue channels, but in this case, C is one. And what is R? R is your upscaling. And that's where your R square is coming in. And then do a shuffling operation. Uh, take this, uh, I guess it's magenta, put it here. Take the blue pixel, put it here, and then keep repeating that pattern. And this way you're increasing the resolution of your image. And this is a convolution. So increase the resolution at the last layer. The rest of it is just the math behind it. It's just uh, going from one layer to the next one. You have convolution, low resolution, a bias, nonlinearity. Do it a couple of uh, layers, stop at the last layer. And now this is where the contribution is gonna come. So up until this point, it was just a bunch of convolutions with different kernel sizes. And the initial number of channels is actually C, maybe red, green, blue. And then each one of these weights are, or your kernels are KL by KL. These are your filter sizes. And then they are taking you from dimension, perhaps N1 to N2, N3 to N4, et cetera, from one layer to the next one. These are the number of feature maps. Okay, so far so good. The only novelty is this last operation that you're doing. What are you doing there? You take the output or the feature maps in your last layer. So these are these guys. This is the last layer or the one before the last layer. This is where you start. There is gonna be a convolution going on, which is this convolution plus a bias. And then there is gonna be PS, which is periodic shuffling operation. This operation here. How do you actually code it up? Visually speaking, it's intuitive what you're doing, but, but how actually, how are we gonna code it up? And let's take a look at the size of this convolution it's going to have a kernel size, and then it's going to take you from dimension n l minus one, which is a dimension of this feature mass here, to r squared times c. And you need r square of them, you need r square channels, because after the reshuffling, you're going to end up with an image that has the same resolution as your original image. So the task of this operation, this last guy, periodic shuffling operation, is to, take, is to take you from a low resolution image with R squared times channels 
to a higher resolution image with the exact number of channels that you need in the end, which could be three. So that's this operation. And how you actually gonna code it in practice, this is the exact formula for it. You want to know the pixel value at location X, Y, and maybe the first color channel, you're gonna divide that because this guy has a lower resolution compared to the other one. You're gonna divide it by the resolution that you need. And then you're gonna read off the values. Maybe you're gonna read off this value here and then copy it and paste it here. And then it's gonna end up being periodic because your channels now, have, you have more channels. Maybe every R channel, you need to repeat yourself. And this is how you're gonna do it using mod operations. So this one, you might need to take some time, maybe at home, take a look at it and see whether it is actually the operations that you see here, whether your intuition matches this formula. But it turns out that this is actually equivalent to a decon for transpose convolution or fractionally stride convolution with a stride one over R. And then you're increasing the size of your filter by R times. So your filters are now R times bigger. This is equivalent. You can actually use fractionally strided convolutions as the last layer here, or you can use this periodic shuffling, which ends up being more efficient. So mathematically speaking, they're the same, but when it comes to computational speed, this one is faster. And your loss function is very basic here. It's mean squared error loss. You're not using another neural network to give you perceptual losses. You're just using this loss. If you use a perceptual loss, you are probably going to get better looking images. And this one is much faster. This was the whole idea. You wanted to come up with something that is faster. At the same time, it has better performance. If you believe that peak signal to noise ratio is a good metric. And qualitatively speaking, these are the type of images that are going to come out of this versus other methods. Any questions about this? So the, quest, the idea, the big idea, was postpone upsampling until the last layers. And in that case, you're increasing the speed significantly. Don't do upsampling and then your convolutions. Do your convolutions and then the upsampling, which could be a deconvolution operation, or you can have a better implementation of it, which is faster, because the whole idea here is to be faster. So was everything clear? Okay, cool.